This episode of My Fishing Cape Cod TV is brought to you by The Goose Hummock Shops in Orleans and Dennis Gray Sail Brewing of Rhode Island And by Towboat US Cape Cod Come visit Goose Hummock, our year-round store in Orleans on the Cape we have an extensive range of equipment in stock for freshwater, inshore, offshore, or fly fishing. Our fanatical fishing staff will happily assist you in choosing the setup that best meets your needs. Our shooting sports department offers a selection of firearms and ammunition in all calibers. We offer firearm safety classes and archery equipment as well. We also offer kayaking or stand-up paddling with a wide range of boats, boards, and other accessories. We also offer lessons and tours from June to October, right off our dock on Town Cove or Leeds. During September, false albacore swim up from the south and infiltrate the waters surrounding the Cape and Islands. Albies are lightning fast and are incredibly strong fighters. They are unpredictable and can be here one day and gone the next. This can make finding and catching albies quite difficult. Today, I am on the hunt for false albacore with Dave Steves from the Goose Hummock Shops in Orleans and Dennis. This is Ryan from My Fishing Cape Cod, and welcome back to another episode of My Fishing Cape Cod TV. Today I have Dave Steves from the Goose Hummock, and we're going to be going after false albacore. So welcome aboard, Dave. Thanks, Ryan. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's late September, actually the last day of September. October starts tomorrow. How are you feeling about our chances today? I'm excited. I'm very optimistic. You know, there's definitely been a lot of fish around. They um, showed up a little late this season, but I think they're really starting to pour in now, and um, I'm very optimistic. We have a great day ahead of us. And for those of you who don't know what a false albacore is, it's basically a small tuna, and they fight like crazy. So let's go see if we can find a few. Dave and I moved down the coast to see if we could spot any albies. When searching for albies, it's important to keep your eyes on the water because oftentimes albies will be feeding right on the surface. Soon Dave spotted some fish breaking the surface, so we stopped the boat and decided to give it a shot. So we've had a few albies bust on the surface here, and albie fishing is definitely a visual game. So we were just cruising down the shoreline here, just, oh, right here we just had another one come up. But instead of just charging right at them, we're just gonna do a drift through the area where we're seeing them pop up, and hopefully we can get one to bite. So Dave, with all these boats out here, you think people are gonna be running and gunning like crazy today? That's one of the things you have to, that's a big challenge when you're out here fishing for albies, you know, blowing up the spool or schools by going through them too fast with the, the boat traffic and the motors. So hopefully everyone will just settle down, be patient, just drift through them. And um, that's when we should start having some better luck. Yep. Yeah, we had a couple just pop up over there. They haven't popped up within casting distance just yet. But yeah, we're not gotta be like racing like crazy from paw to fish to paw to fish. We're just gotta set up a drift and more or less let the fish come to us. It's a little bit more relaxing doing that as well instead of running and gunning all over the place. We had a really good chance there. They popped up right to the starboard side, but I had a tangle. But at least we're seeing some more life. It's been kind of difficult. Been covering a lot of miles of coastline here. Beautiful coastline. But we're finally starting to see a few more pops, so maybe it'll happen later this morning. Just gotta keep trying to not give up. As the tide started to pick up speed, so did our luck. And it wasn't long until we had a bend in the rod. I, what is it? Oh, it's an albie, it's an albie. Woo, jeez, finally. Oh my goodness. This guy's about to take off, I think. Wow, we really had to work hard for that one. There he goes. So we're here in this little rip line that's developing right next to the, the shoreline here. Dave, how many have we seen pop up the last couple minutes? More and more as that tide starts kicking in. Yep. Once that tide turns, we're starting to see more life out here. This guy's decent size. He hasn't gone on a crazy big run just yet. 
I just flipped that 10 feet off the boat and he came up and smacked it. Do you want to land this guy? Yeah, I'll, I'll land him when he's ready. All right. Still got a lot of life left. Nice. Oh, he's strong. Well oh, done, Ryan. Got one. Oh, nice wow, he's job. bleeding like crazy, huh? That's a good size one, though. Beautiful. Came right out. Look at that. You gotta work hard for that guy. Beautiful. Thank you very much. All right. Say goodbye. Yeah, say goodbye. <laughs> oh. All right. We got the skunk out of the boat. <laughs> Right now I'm using a soft plastic bait and that's what I got that first Albi on. This is a white Albi snack and it's rigged with one of these weedless hooks, has a little screw right there and you screw the Albi snack just like so and then the most important part is taking the hook and making sure the soft plastic bait lies nice and flat on the hook. So just like that. Now these don't cast as well as some of the epoxy jigs or a cast masters or any sort of metal jig, but they have great action and you just skip it right across the surface. So I just reel it in at a medium speed and just little twitches of the rod just like that. And it's really fun when you get a hit because this is a surface lure. So the algae comes right up on top of the water and just crushes it right on the surface. And you usually get to see the whole thing. You see the fish come up and just eat it, which is really cool. With Albies holding close to shore in the current, Dave decided to switch to the fly rod. And it wasn't long until his efforts paid off. Come visit Goose Hammock, our year-round store in Orleans on the Cape. We have an extensive range of equipment in stock for freshwater, inshore, offshore, or fly fishing. Our fanatical fishing staff will happily assist you in choosing the setup that best meets your needs. Our shooting sports department offers a selection of firearms and ammunition in all calibers. We offer firearm safety classes and archery equipment as well. We also offer kayaking or stand-up paddling with a wide range of boats, boards, and other accessories. We also offer lessons and tours from June to October, right off our dock on Town Cove Orleans. Here at Graysdale, we believe if you do something, you should do it well. That's why we make great beer. With every pint we pour, it's personal. Because to us, it's more than just beer. It's our passion. We start off with quality ingredients, hard work, and a love for our community. And with that, we know that every beer we package is the best it can be. Because we care about the beer we make and the people who drink it. We are Graysdale Brewing of Rhode Island. Drink great, drink local, drink Graysdale. Cape Cod Canal offers some of the best fishing in New England. Its strong tides and steep banks can be a challenge for even the most experienced angler. Fishing here takes hard work and dedication. And to catch big fish, you need the right gear for the job. Canal Bait and Tackle offers all the products you need to land fish in the canal and in the surf. Shop the best quality gear and learn from a friendly staff with over 20 years of experience. Canal Bait and Tackle, big fish start here. Welcome back to My Fishing Cape Cod TV. Right now, Dave and I are headed up and down the coast, looking for pods of albies. Dave just made the switch to the fly rod, and it wasn't long before his efforts paid off. We're just drifting this shoreline, and uh, the current was really starting to pick up, and we know the fish have been just holding along this stretch of beach. So I figured I'd just go with the fly rod with the fast sinking line, and I just made a couple blind casts, and he just picked it up on the second or third strip, so awesome. I got really lucky. Nice job. I'm just trying to clear my line. Okay, got, got him to the reel. 
Oh wow, they're blowing up right over here. There he is. Nice. I see you the like leader. Landing for you? Yeah, if you don't mind, Ryan. You can see the leader. It's only about five feet long. All right, I'll do my best. Come here, buddy. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. Nice job. Look at that. Awesome. A beautiful dog. fish. Whoa, he inhaled it, huh? Yeah, he absolutely oh, did. Wow. These guys are all muscle. Built for speed and super colorful. Really pretty. Whew. Open up, buddy. Yeah, he wanted that go. tutti frutti. Look at that. Nice. That's all it was. <laughs> Sweet. All right, well, we'll release this guy. And would you say the best way of releasing Albies is just to... Yeah, I just do the Straight dunk. down? Yeah. All right. Drive some oxygen through those gills. Yeah. So I'm just going to drop this guy straight into the water. Well done. Awesome. Thank That's you. That's great. <laughs> that was fun. Let's go do that drift again. All right. False albacore are very challenging to catch, especially when using a fly rod. That's why it's important to be outfitted with the proper gear. So I'm gonna just show you some of the albi gear that I brought along today uh, in terms of the fly fishing end of things. Um, we typically use an eight to 10 weight. Uh, nine seems to be the perfect outfit if you're just uh, fishing with one fly rod. That's probably the one that I would recommend. It works well on windy days as well as calm days and can handle any of the size albies that we're seeing here on Cape Cod. Um, what you want in a fly rod is one that has a fast action, something that can deal with generating a lot of line speed as well as casting long distances so we can reach those schools of albies that are usually boat shy. Um, you also want to really invest in a quality saltwater fly fishing reel. This is where you don't want to skimp on a on a reel because these fish take long, strong runs and you want a quality drag, a quality seal drag for this type of fishing. Um, in most cases, you can still use these outfits for stripers and bluefish, but with albies, you just have to pay a little bit more attention to the type of drag that you have in the reel so that you can stop those fish and tire them out a little bit quicker. Um, we typically use um, two, types of two types of sinking lines, an intermediate, which sinks very slowly, that's great for when you see a lot of fish activity on the surface where you um, can make a nice long cast. If you miss them, you can still fairly easily pick it up out of the water and cast again. Um, today we're using more of a fast sinking line. The fish weren't coming to the surface as frequently, but we knew they were running the beaches. So I was just blind casting along the rocks and the shoreline with a fast sinking line, getting those fish that were below the boat. Uh, for leaders, I typically use a nine foot tapered leader with my intermediate lines in 16 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Uh, for the faster sinking lines, I shorten my leaders up. I go to a five to seven foot leader only because I want to get that fly down quick at the same rate as the fly line. Um, and, and in that case, I use just a straight piece of monofilament, 16 to 20 pound, just to get it down quick with the, with the, the line, and it, it's more down and dirty. Today I was using a fly known as the Tutti Frutti, and it's basically the color combination that works for some reason really well with the Albies. It's more of an attractant color. They seem to key in on that chartreuse and pink color combination. It can be tied in a clouser style like this with weighted eyes or in like a deceiver type pattern without the weighted eyes um, using that same color combination and the length of the fly to me is the most important I was trying to match the length of the fly to the length of the bait fish that we were seeing today So I'm just doing a double haul technique to generate good line speed to get a nice long cast out there and I'm using a fast sink tip um, fly line and I'm just letting it sink just for a couple seconds because we've got a lot of current here and I'm going to keep my rod tip low to the water and do a one-handed retrieve and the retrieve is just mimicking the, the fly as a bait fish swimming or struggling through the current 
It's not a too fast or aggressive retrieve, but I am giving a little bit of a snap at the end just to give it a little bit more action. And if that fish hits, I'm gonna do a one-handed strip strike and set the hook with my hand, not the rod. Might even give it a couple of little roll casts, just give the line some slack so it's a chance to drift a little bit deeper as we get further away from the shoreline. We're only in about 15 to 18 feet of water. And then once that line goes tight against uh, the current, that's when I start retrieving the fly. I also want that rod tip pointed right to the line so there's no slack in it. So every time I make that short retrieve, that fly reacts to the retrieve. If that fish takes it, then I have no slack in the line so where when I do that one-handed strip strike, I can set the hook. You don't want any slack in the line because you're not gonna make the fly move or feel the fish hit the fly. A few more casts, we decided to take another trip down the coast to see if we could spot more fish. So being able to find Albies is obviously a very important part of the equation and today, I had been scouting around for the previous few days, so I had an idea of where they were. But that's a really good part of what my fish in Cape Cod can do for you, is help to connect you with people who are on the water. Because networking and talking to people on your fishing network can help you decide where to go. You know, whether it be Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, and in recent years they've even been coming into Cape Cod Bay and being caught inside the Cape Cod Canal. Now. Once you decide where you're going to be fishing and you get out on the water, I don't know for you, Dave, but for me, I like to just start moving around and I'm looking for fish breaking, I'm looking for birds. Anything else that you're looking for? Um, definitely looking for birds. And I always find that terns are a really good bird to kind of target. You know, they tend to key in on the type of bait that the albies are feeding on. So if you find a good group of birds moving real fast and erratically, that's a good indication that there's probably some albies below them. Okay. And speaking of bait, in my experience, albies seem to be either keyed in on bay anchovies, sand eels, or today in particular, they were eating peanut bunker. Yeah. And I know from experience that when they're on bay anchovies, which are really, really small, they can be very difficult and finicky to very, catch. Very finicky to catch when they're on tiny stuff, micro stuff like that. Now, how does that change when they're on peanut bunker? Well, that's when you gotta be a lot more, you have to pay more attention to the type of lures you're throwing. You can scale down on the size. You know, mm -hmm. like you can find some of those deadly dicks or the epoxies and the two and a half inch, the really small ones that they make. Uh, and fly fishing, where sometimes it's a little bit easier to really mimic the, the bait exactly because you can tie them in tiny little hooks in and, and one to one inch patterns. Mm -hmm. So I always try to gauge it based on the length of the bait fish and mimic the lure or the fly based on that and then go to the profile and then the color. Dave and I spent some more time searching the coast, but it was clear that the Albies had eluded us and I reluctantly turned the bow towards home. I needed to get some rest because I had a morning trip scheduled with my fishing Cape Cod member Hayden Gallagher. I really hope the Albies would show up in better numbers for my trip with Hayden. Come visit Goose Hammock, our year-round store in Orleans on the Cape. We have an extensive range of equipment in stock for freshwater, inshore, offshore, or fly fishing. Our fanatical fishing staff will happily assist you in choosing the setup that best meets your needs. Our shooting sports department offers a selection of firearms and ammunition in all calibers. We offer firearm safety classes and archery equipment as well. We also offer kayaking or stand-up paddling with a wide range of boats, boards, and other accessories. We also offer lessons and tours from June to October, right off our dock on Town Cove Orleans. The Cape Cod Canal offers some of the best fishing in New England. Its strong tides and steep banks can be a challenge for even the most experienced angler. Fishing here takes hard work and dedication. And to catch big fish, you need the right gear for the job. Canal Bait and Tackle offers all the products you need to land fish in the canal and in the surf. Shop the best quality gear and learn from a friendly staff with over 20 years of experience. Canal Bait and Tackle. Big fish start here. Here at Graysdale, we believe if you do something, you should do it well. That's why we make great beer. With every pint we pour, it's personal. Because to us, it's more than just beer. It's our passion. We start off with quality ingredients, hard work, and a love for our community. And with that, we know that every beer we package is the best it can be. Because we care about the beer we make and the people who drink it. We are Graysdale Brewing of Rhode Island. Drink great, drink local, drink Graysdale. 
The weather had shifted overnight, and a dense fog had rolled in. I met Hayden at the marina, and after a brief fog delay, we launched a Miss Loretta and headed down the coast. It wasn't long until we had a bend in the rod. We just got out here, it's super foggy. A little late start. Oh, right there. Oh, it's oh that you one. can just have a hit. Just that one. There we go. First cast. <laughs> nice Gotta job. Push on. I don't is know. that a little guy or? I don't know what it is. Could be could bluefish, be, you never could know. Could be little bluefish. Yeah, he's not really running like an Albie. No. Could be a real little guy. Oh, though. we gotta save that for uh, Cullen for tuna bait. It's a little bluefish. Our buddy Cullen from Cape Star is out here trying to get tuna bait, so I'm gonna get the live well going. Oh, that's perfect tuna bait right there. Yesterday, I was out and got a 780-pound giant bluefin tuna. And bluefin tuna absolutely love bluefish. So this is prime giant perfect bluefin tuna bait. Tuna bait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on. I don't know. I'm not sure if these are algae. Oh, it might be. This kind of like a. Blue might be. Yeah, I think it's a little blue. They have some serious teeth. The bigger ones could take your finger off. And the jaws on this guy, I still would keep my fingers clear from his, uh, from his teeth. Oh, yeah. So we're going to keep this guy. I'm going to release this one. And these little blue fish are actually really tasty. You got to get your pliers. After hours of fighting our way through the fog and the bluefish, the weather finally improved and our luck began to change. Get that baby in. Wow, talk about working hard for him today. Yeah, look at that. That's Hayden, nasty. I'm gonna give you a huge hug if you get this fish in. <laughs> <laughs> My golly, I cannot believe it. Oh, look at that feed out there. We, oh, I'm, where's, let me see that. Where's your line? I don't want to cross I'm it. I'm straight okay, out. You're okay. Straight out. Don't worry about me. Beautiful little fish. Hey! There we go. My God. There we go. Holy cow. <laughs> it only took, what, <laughs> eight hours? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe wow. it. That's a good size one, too. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Just on a little Look epoxy. at the, uh, the beautiful colors on this guy. Wow. I cannot believe you just hooked that fish. Save the day. Doing the same thing I was doing. And he just decided to bite it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Great feeling there. Well, we should probably get this guy back in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful fish. Hayden and I continued casting, but eventually we had to call it a trip and head home. We had logged in a full eight hours and had only caught one false albacore. Albie fishing can be hot and heavy one day and then extremely challenging and difficult the next. That's why it is always so rewarding when you finally do catch one. We worked hard and ultimately, our never give up attitude eventually paid off. Until the next adventure, tight lines and take care.